Hello, hello. God bless you. I want to say welcome to everybody, but especially any visitors that are here on Living Faith Online. I just want to say hi and welcome. Hey, Living Faith, God bless you, love you. Good to be with you today in the Word of God. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this time in your Word. God, we love your Word. Man, it gives us uh, revelation. It gives us peace. It gives us hope. It gives us strength. Uh, it gives us uh, pictures, imagination for our future. And so, Father, we just thank you for blessing this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I just want to uh, say that I miss, I just want to tell all of our senior citizens, all of our seniors at Living Faith Christian Center who haven't been able to come to church or haven't been att uh, attending services. I miss you and I can't wait to see your faces really soon, really, really soon. I love you and I miss you. I miss, I miss anybody who's not coming, but I just wanted to specifically mention our senior citizens. We love you. We love you. Also, uh, I just have one other uh, one announcement, and that is that next week is healing school. So next week is the last Wednesday in the month. And so as usual, I preach on healing. Okay, so just give me a heads up on that. All right. Well, tonight we're going to continue to talk about the imagination, how God has given us it's a God-given imagination. I know Sunday I was, as I was preaching and I just uh, was prompted to say that we have supernatural powers and we can actually say that we have superpowers or supernatural powers because we've been given powers. We've been given power, abilities, and authority by God himself. And God is a supernatural God. Amen. He is spirit. He's a spirit. And uh, so whatever he gives us, it's a supernatural power and a supernatural ability that we've been given because we are created. Uh, we're tripart beings. We are spirit first. We possess a soul and we live in a body. But we are a spirit man. And so God has given us spiritual gifts, spiritual abilities. We're going to talk about, uh, continue talking about the imagination because God has given us an imagination. It was his idea. It wasn't our idea. But just like everything that the devil does, he always wants to try to hijack anything that comes from God. Amen. And so we don't want to do it. Somebody say, don't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give my imagination over to the devil. I'm going to... Uh, to yield my imagination to God. All right, so we know that, we saw that in Genesis chapter 3, that Adam and Eve, they functioned with an imagination, with their imagination. Adam used his imagination, uh, as the scripture says, and uh, uh, it says that uh, God watched to see what he would call them, what he would call the animals. And uh, we know that Adam used his imagination to name the animals. We also saw in Genesis chapter 3, in Genesis chapter 3, where uh, Eve took the wrong route, both Adam and Eve, and she allowed the serpent to beguile her and deceive her. And he used her ability, her supernatural power of a, uh, a, an ability to to imagine things, to see things, to see mental pictures, to see mental images, amen? And But he caused her to use it uh, against her, to use it for bad, right? Uh, we also read, and this is just a review, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, how it says how God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So I, I want to make note uh, that this scripture in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, it mentions three things at least that involve the um, imagination. And it says that, and that every imagination, the ability to see pictures, 
the ability, ability to see images. It says that every imagination of the thoughts, there goes another word, of his heart were evil continually. So the imagination is connected, obviously, according to the scriptures, our imagination is connected to our heart and is connected to our thoughts, right? It's connected to our mind, our soul. Our soul is made up of our, our mind, our will, and our emotions and our imagination. And so God saw that it was evil continually. And then, we, of course, we know the flood came. And then in Genesis chapter 11 and verses 1 through 9, we see how men had... Uh, uh, agreed together to build the Tower of Babel and to build a city, and they said that they would make their name great, and uh, they and so that they wouldn't be scattered over the face of the earth, which was the will of God, because Adam and Eve were supposed to populate the earth. They weren't supposed to stick in one spot. Amen. And so, uh, in in verse six of Genesis chapter eleven, uh, God said, "They said, let us go down." in those verses and and mess them up and so they were using their imagination to create and to do evil which of course god being a good god and a holy god and a righteous god of course he wouldn't cause us to use our imagination to do evil but they were and so god said hey let us go down and mess them up and so he took away their one language he gave them multiple languages and uh, God interfered. He got involved because that what they were doing and what they were building was not God's will. Now, God doesn't have a problem with us building things. But, of course, we as believers, we need to always stay connected to the will of God when we are doing anything. And that's including using our imagination. Amen. And so uh, he, he said in verse 6, God, God said in verse 6, he says, And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now I just want us to just look at that again and just realize how much power is in that. Again, God didn't rebuke them for having an imagination. He came down and got involved and messed up their stuff, what they were building and doing because it wasn't God's will to do it. But the point I don't want us to miss in, in this verse is that uh, God made a statement. He said, there's nothing that will be restrained from them. There's nothing that they won't be able to accomplish. There's nowhere that they won't be able to go, nothing that they won't be able to do that they have imagined to do. So God is telling us right here how much power is in the imagination. That's why God had to do something about it himself. He had to get involved himself because he knew that if they continued on that path, that they would end up doing what they wanted to do and accomplishing what they wanted to do. Also mentioned that the reason why men and women fail, the reason why uh, sometimes ministries fail, households fail is because uh, because ministries and households and men and women, they get busy building their own kingdom. They get busy building their own thing and not building what God wants them to imagine and to build. Amen. And so we always have to stick close to God. Matthew 6 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And so even with our imaginations, we need to be seeking to use our imaginations for God, amen, and for the kingdom of God. And so I, I wrote down a statement here. Therefore, we should not, since God said there's nothing that will be restrained from them that they imagine to do. There's a lot of power, superpower in that. Therefore, we shouldn't complain to God about what we can't do. I'm going to say that again. If God said that there's nothing that will be restrained from you and me, that we imagine to do, then we have no room for to tell God, whine to God and complain to God about what we can't do. Amen. So we shouldn't be saying things like when we, you know, we need to realize what we're saying when, when we say, let's say somebody tells you something or they share a principle out of the word of God or a scripture 
or anything, some worldly fact or something, and then we make the statement, well, I just can't see that. Well, that means, you know, no, we can see that. We, if we purpose to use our imaginations toward that thought, toward that idea, toward that concept, toward that creation, then we can see it. We have the ability to see it. So, you know, we need to catch ourselves, especially as far as the word of God and the promises of God. We need to catch ourselves saying, I, I just can't see that. I, I just can't see me doing that. I, I just can't see me being that. Look, if God told you that you could do it and God told you that you could be it, then you can. And so, you know, we don't need to be whining and complaining to God about what we're doing and not doing and can do and can't do. He gave us an imagination so that we could see it first so that it could come so that it could come to pass. And so we see here also that men not that men not just Adam and Eve were exercising or using their imagination, but it was for evil. And they were using it to build what they wanted to build. And again, it's okay for us to build or to use our imaginations to create and to build but we have to make sure we're sticking to the plan of God and to the will of God. Of course, and that's in everything. Remember, we are, we belong to God and we are not our own. Amen. And so we even need to use our imaginations for God. And so uh, another point I wanted to make is they saw that tower. They were able to begin to build that tower. I've seen pictures, um, uh, on the internet and and in in books, I'm sure, where what they um, pu uh, proposed or um, uh, deducted, according to the scriptures, what the Tower of Babel looked like, and it looked like it was a spiral thing, and so, you know, it looked like it had steps going all the way around. It was just going higher and higher and higher. It's it, it just amazing that the picture to look at it was just amazing so but the thing is one of those guys somebody somebody and it only took one person that you're just one person I'm one person but it took one person to be able to see what they wanted to build they 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 somebody sat there and they meditated and they said what well, if we um how are we going to build something you know because I used to wonder you know, it, it's amazing how they built the, the, the ruins. They built the pyramids and stuff. I'm like, how did they do those things? How did they build those uh, buildings and artifacts uh, without, without um, you know, we have, um, we have, uh, what are those things that you, um, we have risers, we have, um, um, uh, all of a sudden, I can't think of things that they used in construction, but uh, they didn't, well, they probably had scaffolds, but, you know, they didn't even have the machinery that they have. That's the point I'm trying to make, okay? And so, but they were still able to uh, uh, imagine and to see this tower that they were going to build all the way to heaven. Just, just an amazing thing. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26 to 28, I wanted to um, uh, <coughs> uh, I wanted to uh, talk about this scripture for a minute because in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28 I'm going to focus on verse 28 in particular but it says and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and to subdue it and to have dominion and so uh what I wanted to say here is God gave us an imagination, so gave man an imagination so he could use his imagination to use his ability, his God-given ability to see images and to see pictures and to design things and create things in his mind and in his imagination to be able to see with eyes of faith so, so God gave man the imagination to do these things that he commanded man to do, and we're, we're called to do the same thing. And the word uh, to be fruitful means to bear fruit, to means, it means to bring forth, it means to grow, and it means to increase. So God called 
us to be fruitful for so that means we can use you and I can use our imaginations to to be fruitful right that's why God gave us an imagination so we could use our our imagination our thoughts our our uh, mental creations to to know how to be fruitful uh, he told them to multiply that means to be become great in number to enlarge and so we can use our imaginations to to uh, be fruitful. We can use our imagination. God wants us to use our, he gave us imaginations so that we can multiply. He gave us imaginations. It also says to replenish, to replenish the earth. That means to cause to be full, to, to be armed. It means to be satisfied. It means to furnish. And so God has given us an imagination and he's given us his word he's given us his word he's given us the whole bible he's given us the scriptures which are profitable for everything for everything in life um and so god's given us imagination so that we could be fruitful so that we can multiply so that we can replenish the earth uh so that we could subdue the earth so we need an imagination we can use our imagination to subdue that means to put things under us. Amen. To take things over what needs to be taken over. We to, to, uh, to take the devil over. Amen. And to take away from him. Uh, we can use our imaginations to have dominion. That means to rule. You know, we have to imagine ourselves. Some of uh, most of us, unless we grew up in royalty, uh, most of us, we never experience dominating. And that word dominion, it means to dominate, it means to rule, it means to reign, it means to tread down, it means to prevail against. Uh, and so we need our imaginations. We need the word of God, the scriptures that tells us that we reign and rule in life by one Christ Jesus. God wants us to get our imaginations involved in the scriptures and in the word of God. You know, I was reading Psalm 78, uh, uh, I believe it was Psalm 78. Let me, let me find where. I was read Psalm, reading Psalm 78, verse 6 uh, on, on Monday, I think it was. And um, as I read those scriptures, and it talks about um, repeating the things, repeating how God had instructed men to repeat all the great things that he did, how God conquered nations for them and uh, caused them to have an inheritance, caused them to possess things that they didn't, uh, that they didn't build uh, or that they didn't create. And, and um, God did many things. He uh, split the Red Sea and uh, he caused plagues. Uh, he caused water to come out of a rock and uh, he he kept his people in the wilderness where there's nothing, you know. And so, and they were to rehearse these things to their children. And it says that the things that God did, that they were, the people were supposed to even say those things to tell children that weren't even born yet. And it just inspired me. And it's not the first time this verse has done this to me, but it, it inspired me. I'm like, you know what? We need, to, we need to start believing God, and we need to start exercising our faith in our houses, in our church, at Living Faith uh, Christian Center. We need, to, we need to start believing God and seeing God uh, and believing God to do things that our children cannot deny. And so that there are things that, that we believe God for, for, for things uh, for promises coming to pass, for miracles and wonders that we can share with our children to inspire them to serve God, things that we can share with our grandchildren to inspire them. So we're going to have to start doing some things. We're going to have to believe God for more. If you're there with somebody, j just say, I'm believing God for more. This is the year for more for me. And I am going to allow the word of God and God and my God-given imagination to cause me to see things that I can tell my children about. And yea, even that our children will see themselves. Anybody with me? Anybody with me? 
So that's what I that's what I saw and inspired me when I was reading those verses. And so, um, uh, so you know, God has given us this God-given uh, power called imagination. And so God gave us imagination, the ability to see mental images and mental pictures so that we could create things, so that we cre could create things, so that we could create circumstances, new circumstances. Remember, we use our imaginations to take us out of here, to take us from where we are currently in the with the issues that we're having in the circumstances to take us from under the circumstances to being over the circumstances. God gave us an imagination so that we could create outcomes, right? God wants us to use our imagination to create outcomes, good outcomes, God outcomes, to create good circumstances, God's circumstances, amen? That's why God gave us an imagination, so that we can see it, so that we can do it. Also, so that we can see it in our mind's eye, in our imagination, with our eyes of faith, and then we're going to see that thing in the flesh, in it's going to be manifested. God wants to manifest things in our lives. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, Share with you, remember last week we talked about John chapter 5 and verse 19, and I'm just going to give some biblical examples of how using our imagination benefits us, the believer. In John chapter 5 and verse 19, uh, uh, Jesus answered and he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. And so God was, Jesus was God, but he was man as well. Um, he was the son of God and he was the son of man as well. And so Jesus used his imagination or his eyes of faith, we can say. He said, but what, he says, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what thing soever he doeth, talking about the father, uh, these also doeth the Son likewise. We need to allow God to imprint, to impact our imagination so that we can see what God is showing us. And so Jesus was able to do what he saw by faith and in the Spirit, what he saw the Father do. And so when Jesus got away and spent time with God, so we know that we can develop our imaginations by spending time with God. You know, uh, the Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that, that comes from hearing repeatedly the word of God. Well, also, we can see, uh, we can see the promises of God accomplished in our lives as we continue to see. So the promises come um, not just by hearing, but we need to see and to see and to see. Amen. So we don't just let God use our imagination on Sundays. No, we have to be using our imaginations all the time so that we can continue to see what we were believing God for. And so God himself, Jesus himself used his imagination. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 20, it talks about the woman with the, with the issue of blood. Now, she had spent all that she had. The doctors couldn't help her. And she had decided, she had heard about Jesus, of course. Faith comes by hearing. But she had decided, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And so what happened? She envisioned that thing. She pictured she, I guarantee you, she pictured herself getting healed. She pictured herself moving through that crowd. She pictured herself touching Jesus' hem, the hem of his garment, and she pictured herself getting whole. Now, uh, something, so uh, I, I want to um, mention this, that when we have the ability, when we use our imaginations, uh, uh, I believe that that's when God begins to give us a strategy. But God can't, he, he can't give us a, a strategy. He, he can't help us until we can see it first. 
And so we see his word. We see his promises. We see the things that he has spoken to our hearts. The Bible says that God would give us, that it's okay for us to delight in other things. But God said, if you delight yourself in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And so I, I made a note here that because this woman, because she heard about Jesus, she got faith in what she heard. And she had determined, she, this woman used her imagination and she saw herself healed. God gave this woman a strategy. He gave her a strategy. Now, she was, when you had an issue of blood, you were unclean. If you were a hemorrhaging woman, you were unclean, and you weren't even supposed to be out in public. And so I believe that as this woman saw herself healed, I believe that God gave her a strategy, um, uh, how a strategy of how she would slip through the crowd. How was she going to slip through a crowd and nobody see her? How was she going to get close enough to Jesus to touch his garment so that she could be healed? I believe that once she saw it with her imagination, that God gave her the strategy to, to get to Jesus. Amen. Because that's what she saw. That's what she wanted. And God will do the same thing for us. If we could just see it, God will help us with a strategy. In Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5, God encouraged, he, he called Abraham aside and he, he told Abraham to look at the stars. And he said, if you can count the stars in the sky, then you can count the seed and the nations that I'm going to produce through your loins. What was God say, say, doing? God was uh, causing Abraham to use his imagination to see what God had been telling him, that what God had been promising him. And so uh, God told him to look at the stars. And he says, you're going to have many descendants. You're going to have many seed. Now, did Abraham look at the stars and start seeing he had little stars running around? No. God caused Abraham to use his imagination to see little people, to see people, to see generations and nations coming out of his loins. Amen. And so God, right there in Genesis 15 and verse 5, God himself was encouraging and stirring and activating Abraham's imagination so that he could see the promise of God. That's, that's powerful. Amen. And so God used what he had, right? God used what he had and God had stars and it was it's so many stars. He said, if you can count them, then you can count how many people are going to come from you. Amen. Uh, Psalm 27 and verse 13, it says, I would have fainted. I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God doesn't want us to faint. God doesn't want us to pass out. God doesn't want us to give up on the things that he has told us, told us and the things that he has shown us. He doesn't want us to faint when somebody dies. He doesn't want us to faint when tragedy appears. He doesn't want us to faint or to draw back when we are... are, are um, faced with tribulations and troubles. Amen. And we all face various uh, things in life. Life isn't always, always just perfect. You know, everything's so just beautiful. No, we, we, there's some challenges where we just have to use our faith at a whole nother level. And so uh, Psalm 27, 13, again, I would have fainted if I hadn't what? If I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord. God gave us an imagination. So even when things look bad, that we can use our imaginations to see good. Amen. We can see good in our imaginations so that we can see good, that we will see good come to pass. But we got to see it first. Amen. God wants to help us, but we have to see first. We have to see first, amen? So we don't want our imaginations to be dormant. We don't want to be uh, 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 imagination zombies. We don't, want, we don't want to just be sitting like, you know, oh, you know, oh, it is what it is. And gee, I wonder what God's going to do in my life right now. You know, I wonder, you know, I wonder, uh, Lord, just, just come take me. 
you know, nothing's changing in my life. Everything's the same. You know, no, you, we don't need to be zombies. We need to be exercising our faith at all times. And it starts with the imagination. When it looks like nothing's happening in the natural, we can start with our imaginations. Amen. And so that word there, if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, that word believed, it means to stand firm. It means to trust. It means to be certain. How can you, uh, uh, our problem is, a believer's problem is we have to believe to see. Amen. So it even takes faith to use our imagination. We have to believe to see. We have to believe the word of God to see. We have to believe what God has said in order for us to see in our mind's eye or in our imagination. And so uh, it, it, that word believed, it also means to be certain. How in the world can we be certain? Well, we can be certain because we're going to see it. We're going to use our supernatural power of imagination and we're going to see it. Amen. That word see, it means to look at, it means to inspect, it means to perceive, it means to consider. You can only look at something that you can see. You can only inspect something that you can see. You can only consider something that you can see. You can only do these things when you can see something. Amen. And so uh, that scripture is very clear that you have to see. When my husband passed away and went to heaven, I had to believe. I had to, I had to close my eyes and I had to determine that good was still going to happen in my life. I was still going to see the goodness of God. I was still going to see the provision of God. I was still going to experience the love of God the promises of God, all these things I had to believe, amen, so that I would not faint. We have to use our imagination so we don't faint, man. We, we, we don't want to faint. We got to see what God shows us and what God is telling us. In Numbers 13, I'm, I'm getting ready to close here. In Numbers 13, God sent the spies into the, to, into the promised land. God was activating uh, um, uh, he was causing them to see something. It's like us seeing in our imagination when we read the word of God and see ourselves in the word of God. Well, he sent them to spy out the land. Our imaginations will cause us to spy out the land, to spy out the things that God has promised to us. Amen. And so um, he, God sent them to see something, to activate their courage, to activate their strength, to activate their determination. Amen. So God has given us the imagination to do the very same thing. Amen. Two came back and they saw that they could conquer by using their imaginations, even though what they had, they saw the same thing the other 10 spies saw. The 10 spies saw defeat, two spies saw victory. Amen. So it depends on how, how each man saw. Amen. So it depends on how we see that is going to determine our outcome. And lastly, in Judges chapter seven, when God called Gideon and Gideon was just minding his own business. When God came along and called him a mighty man of God, and he was like, who are you talking to me? <laughs> but there was something that God had called Gideon to do. He had called him to defeat. Uh, I believe it was the Philistines, I think. I think. Um, but God wanted to use Gideon. This was, this was Gideon's appointed time, amen, to, to do something. So what did God do? He got, God encouraged him. He did the fleece thing, you know, dry and then wet and, you know, all that. But also what God did is he, he caused Gideon, he, call, he told Gideon to go to the enemy's camp. And now it's bothering me that if, whether it was the Philistines or not. It was an enemy. Let's put it that way. Uh, who cares what their name was? But but God caused Gideon to hear a dream that one of the men from the enemy camp had. And when he heard the dream, it caused, it, 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 it told, it let Gideon know that they were going to win, that, that the enemy was going to be defeated by God and by Gideon 
and by Gideon's army. Amen. Even though he just had 300. So when Gideon heard that, same thing happens when we hear the word of God. Incline thine ear unto my words, right? And, and, and to my sayings. Pay attention to my sayings. And so when Gideon heard the dream, it caused him to use his imagination. He heard those words. He heard that dream, and it caused him to see. He could, he could then see his victory in overcoming, uh, the, in, in winning in this battle. And, of course, we, uh, if you read the story, we know that he won. Amen? That they won with God's help. Praise the Lord. So God wants you and I to use our imaginations. It's very powerful. It's a superpower that we have. God has given us the ability to see, to change our destiny, to change our condition, to change our bodies. Amen. Um, and so, so we need to imagine our, our, ourselves uh, in these things and uh, I'm, I'm so sorry I ran out of time. I had I had things to do, and so, um, uh, so, 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 let's get to it. Let's read the Word of God. Let's let's hear from God so that our imaginations can be activated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. All right. Well, it th for some of you tonight it. Um, it may be your time that you've chosen to uh, present God with his tithe and to give an offering today. And so uh, we're going to give you some information under this video. There are three ways to give. If you're tithing tonight or you're giving, you're sowing a seed tonight into the kingdom of God, into the gospel of God, and into your, your own ministry, Living Faith. And so there's three ways to give. You can give by going online by going to lfccnj.com forward slash giving. You can text to give by texting lfccnj to 77977. You can also mail in, of course, your tithe to 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey. The zip code is 08110. And the two scriptures that I wanted to use tonight, one is in Genesis chapter 12. We talked about Abraham uh, a little bit t tonight, and God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, he said, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you I, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Remember when God showed Abraham all the stars and he said, look, buddy, you're going to have so many offspring. And which leads me to, um, leads me to uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verses uh, 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. I'm going to read that really quick and uh, as you're preparing your offering. And your tithe in Galatians 3.13, of course, is the New King James Version. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. For it is written, uh, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. If you're Jew or Gentile, Gentile in the Bible, it means... Uh, a not, it means a non-Jew. And of course, now we're all in the same family of God, Jew and Gentile. But it says that the blessing, Jesus took on the curse. He became a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you that you can be a blessing. Look, God has called you and me to be a blessing to other people. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you're not in, in the uh, position to do that right now. Well, you can use your imagination and you can use your words of faith and confessions and declarations. God, I determine right now that I am going to be blessed or that I am blessed and I 
I will be a blessing to other people. And, and just tell God, God, I, I don't have enough right now, but God, I'm believing you. Your word says this, that you became a curse and that the blessing of Abraham will come on me. So God, I thank you that the blessing of Abraham is coming on my life and I'll be able to be a blessing to people so that I can imagine myself giving to people, helping people uh, when they're in need so that I can be a blessing to people. So Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Father. We, we present the tithe to you tonight and we present an offering. And God, we thank you that you promised that the, you would open the windows of heaven over our lives as we become tithers and givers. You told us that you would cause us to have a harvest of 30, 60, and even a hundredfold return on our giving. So, Father, we just thank you. We declare that uh, we are blessed in every way. Amen. So, imagine yourself prospering. Imagine yourself uh, giving and giving more eventually so that your harvest can be bigger and bigger and then uh, until the point where one day you are self-sufficient and you don't need anybody's help. But in fact, you will be the helper. I will be the financial helper when we see the blessings of prosperity and more than enough come to pass in our lives. Well, I have to go. I love being with you. I will see you again next week. Remember, next week is healing school. And, um, and so I'll see you next week. Or I'll see you Sunday in church. Love you. God bless you. Bye.